Welcome to clubhousenews.com. You're tuned in to Clubhouse News Weekend for the week ending Saturday, January 24th. I'm Jenny. And I'm Sebastian. President Barack Obama delivered his sixth State of the Union speech on Tuesday in front of Congress, praising America's growing job market, better high school graduation rates, and greater health care coverage. Ever since President Woodrow Wilson in 1913 started the State of the Union trend, presidents use the yearly speech to outline their vision for their country and reflect on its well-being. Obama not only focused on the country's status, he also touched on foreign issues like reopening USA-Cuba relations after decades of cut ties and battling the Islamic State in the Middle East. The Republicans offered a rebuttal, or a counter-speech, given by Senator Joni Ernst of Iowa. She highlighted her party's major wins in the 2014 midterm elections, disagreed with the success of the Obamacare health care law, and talked about defeating terrorists. She also promised struggling Americans that Republicans would cut government spending and help businesses create jobs. The European Union is defending its freedom of speech and refusing to be afraid in the wake of the Islamic attack on Charlie Hebdo in Paris. Islam is the second biggest religion in the world after Christianity and was founded by a man its believers refer to as the Prophet Muhammad. They worship Allah, which is Arabic for God, and extremists were angry that Charlie Hebdo's cartoonist had drawn pictures of Muhammad, a forbidden act. Following a January 7th attack on the newspaper's offices, 3.7 million people marched alongside 40 world leaders into the heart of Paris in a national rally that was the biggest since World War II. Law enforcement hunted down the guilty and other countries like the United Kingdom and Belgium have put police and military forces on high alert. Last week, Belgium broke up a terror group and European leaders are now partnering with Arab states to keep citizens safe. NASA released a report saying that 2014 was the hottest year on record. Now, before you go hide in the refrigerator, the temperature difference is only about one degree or so Fahrenheit. However, the hottest 10 years on record since scientists began tracking temperatures in 1880 have all happened after the year 2000, with the exception of 1998. Scientists believe that the cause is man-made pollution, which releases nasty greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, trapping the sun's heat on Earth like a blanket. The shifting temperatures are also melting glaciers, which is why sea levels have been rapidly rising for the past 20 years. Antarctica has even lost a Mount Everest worth of ice due to global warming. You know, the world's tallest mountain. Furthermore, Arctic sea ice in the North Polar Ocean has fallen about 14% every 10 years. Who else is taking on climate change? Pope Francis, the revolutionary leader of the Catholic Church. Born in Argentina as Jorge Mario Bergoglio, who became the first pope ever elected from the Americas in March 2013 and adopted the name Francis in honor of St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals and the environment. He's putting together a call to action for climate change in preparation for the United Nations Climate Summit in Paris this winter. The humble 78-year-old is widely admired for helping the poor getting rid of corrupt church officials and living humbly. Next September, he'll be heading all the way from the Vatican headquarters in Italy to the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. There, he'll join the World Meeting of the Families, a gathering that celebrates the family as the main building block of society. He also announced recently that he'll be expanding his visit to include New York City and Washington, D.C. King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, whose oil-rich nation is a close ally of the United States in the Middle East, has passed away at the age of 90. The Saudi leader worked to make his conservative Islamic country a more modern place, and he helped America reduce the influence of rival Iran in the region. See, there are two factions in Islam, the Sunnis and the Shias, whose century-long conflict has caused all kinds of trouble. For instance, the chaos that the Islamic State is creating in Iraq and Syria has its roots in Sunni-Shia relations, and the Sunni-led Saudi Arabia has long deposed Shiite Iran. Abdullah was born in 1924 in Riyadh, the capital and largest city of Saudi Arabia, and he ran the country for the past 20 years. His 79-year-old half-brother, Prince Salman, will be the next king of the Saudis. With Abdullah's passing, Britain's 88-year-old Queen Elizabeth II is now the oldest living monarch in the world. How about that queen, ladies and gentlemen? 
Let's have a nice round of applause. Well